Hi, my name is Lukas Janoszkiewicz and I'm a research audio engineer at SoftServe. I have been working with audio technologies for more than 10 years now and a big part of my work was concentrated around the spatial audio, mainly touching aspects such as uh, methods of capturing spatial audio, coding techniques. However, recently my activity is more related to the spatial audio rendering. So one of the special audio techniques that I am most familiar with is the higher order ambisonics and today I would like to tell you about uh, some of the technical aspects of HOA and the potential benefits of using this approach to special audio in games. Before I start, I wanted to make a short introduction and explain why do we care about how the sound is being processed and presented to the listener. So since the beginning of human existence, people were looking for effective ways of communication. And as we can imagine, it started with some kind of verbal communication or uh, gesticulation. And this is a great way of passing the thoughts and messages to each other. However, it has also its limits. So people had a need to store the messages over the time so they could be also received by people present in different place and different time. So this is how they invented the communication with uh, pictures or uh, hieroglyphs. And eventually writing and reading. So from now on, the messages could be stored and passed to future generations. Over the ages, the development of technology was, was progressing, but the needs of more and more effective communication were also born. And that, uh, that allowed people to, to create uh, new ways of storing and passing verbal content. So we could start here with radio that first used mono and then stereo sound, but people wanted something more than just passing the sound. They wanted to allow the, the receivers to, to immerse in the whole sound performance, to fill the space and uh, real life experience as they were at the place and time of the, of the event. So this is how they created special audio and now I'd like to take you for a short overview of the special audio techniques with a little bit more focus on the higher order ambisonics technology. So here is the agenda of my presentation. I will start with short description, description of well-known spatial and non-spatial audio techniques, focusing on two aspects. The first aspect is uh, presentation layouts. Uh, so in general, how the sound can be reproduced and delivered to, the, uh, to, to our ears. The second aspect is production of audio. So what techniques are used to, to produce spatial sound and uh, what is the representation of spatial sound. The core of my presentation is definition of higher order ambisonics, uh, where I will explain to you pros and cons of this technology what kind of formats and conventions uh, can be met uh, when dealing with ambisonics, how to produce ambisonics content and uh, how to render ambisonics content into different presentation layouts. In the next section uh, I will explain what could be the place of ambisonics in game audio and I will summarize the presentation with some sound examples and demos. So let's start with simple definition of special sound. So, so special sound in general allow us listening sound uh, along with its uh, different properties. And we could list here direction of arrival or movement of the sound objects that are present uh, in, in, the, in the captured sound field. Uh, we could uh, feel the distance and uh, the intensity of the individual sound objects we can perceive effects such as reverberation, Doppler effect and other effects. Sometimes we can also meet another term used in the context of special audio and that is uh, 3D audio. So uh, this term is frequently used for even stronger expression of, of that uh, the sound can be heard from all of the directions, including top and bottom. So the user can be immersed in the sound performance. And as you can imagine, there are multiple approaches to pr produce and, and render special audio. So now I would like to discuss the rendering and listening of special audio. So how can it be presented to the listener? Just for the reference, we could start here with the monorail audio where we have a one audio channel, one loudspeaker setup. 
so there are no special cues the audio is reproduced only with one one speaker this technology was introduced in 19th century and it is still in use uh, in applications where there is no need to to send something more than just verbal communicate communication and uh, first video games also were using mono sound and it was good enough for that kind of purposes a very basic special audio setup is is a stereo setup we have two channels and two loudspeakers here and we uh, we have also a limited spatial sound experience uh, mostly provided in front of the user between the left and right uh, speaker uh, this technology was introduced in 50s of 20th century and is still widely in use mostly in home stereo setups and tv sets Another worth to mention setup is a surround audio where the spatial sound experience is extended so it covers full or almost full horizontal space around the user, uh, mostly due to the, the fact that we have uh, more than two speakers, usually five or more, that are placed uh, on the horizontal plane around the user. This technology was introduced in late 20th century and is still widely in use, for instance, in home cinema audio systems. An extended version of surround systems are the so-called immersive speaker systems, uh, that they are capable of uh, reproducing a multi-dimensional sound field, mainly due to the fact that we have, uh, instead of one horizontal plane with speakers, we have additional two layers, a bottom layer and a top layer. So the, 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 the total number of speakers is, is much higher. Uh, for instance, here we have a 22.2 system depicted. This technology was introduced uh, at the beginning of 21st century and it is widely used in uh, professional cinemas, for instance, uh, uh, Dolby Atmos or uh, DTS. And last but not least, uh, headphone play playback. Uh, so similar to stereo setup, uh, headphones require two audio channels and uh, indeed in, in most of uh, cases they are used to, to listen to the content that initially was created for the uh, stereo systems. Uh, however, there is a special audio technique uh, called binaural audio that is used for creating special audio content specifically for the headphone playback and this uh, binaural audio and headphones can provide a real life experience of, of, of hearing sound. So before we go on I would like to, to make a short pause and invite you for a short uh, demo where you will listen to the comparison of the same audio content captured in ambisonics format but rendered for different presentation layouts and played via headphones. So please put on your headphones and listen carefully to the demo. So I hope you enjoyed it and you could feel the difference between mono, stereo and binaural audio. As a matter of fact, my voice now is also captured with an ambisonics microphone and it is binauralized so you could hear me well via headphones. And uh, I will demonstrate you some other features of uh, that, that, that comes along with ambisonics later during this uh, presentation. Okay, so we have discussed the most known speaker arrange arrangements and, and presentation layouts of uh, spatial audio. 
So now I'd like to discuss how the spatial audio can be produced and in what kind of uh, form it can be represented. So let's start here with the most known channel-based audio. So in channel-based audio, the audio content is mixed and represented as a specific number of audio channels. Uh, so the content is uh, already prepared, uh, the layout uh, of the, uh, the presentation layout for, for this kind of content has to be known before we start to produce the audio. So the producer needs to know if he creates the audio for one channel, for two channels or for surround audio where we have, for instance, five channels. Uh, in that kind of uh, spatial audio representation, we have a very limited interaction. So the, the end user can only uh, change the balance between the specific audio channels or mute the specific audio channel. Basically, there is no more interaction with the content. Fortunately, uh, there are down mixing and up, up mixing techniques that allow to go from one channel setup to the other setup. For instance, from it is quite easy to go from stereo audio to mono audio. Uh, going from stereo to, to surround audio is, uh, is a little bit more complicated process, but it is uh, also possible. Another well-known method of producing special audio is object-based audio. So uh, in this approach, uh, uh, the, the audio is represented as a, uh, as a set of sound objects with some associated metadata, such as position of the sound object, uh, directivity pattern, trajectory movement, and other uh, properties of uh, sound properties of, of, of sound object. Uh, this kind of technique uh, already requires uh, the so-called rendering or decoding before it will be uh, presented to the user. So on the user side, we need to have any information how many speakers or, or, uh, or if he is using headphones. So what kind of presentation layout is, is going to be used. And then the renderer uh, is, is processing the sound objects uh, along with the uh, associated metadata in order to create a, a proper uh, audio signals that will be derived to the speakers or headphones. Uh, so, for instance, uh, for immersive speaker layouts, there, 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 there can be uh, used algorithms such as vector-based amplitude panning. For speaker arrays or soundboard, uh, we have a wave field synthesis algorithm. And for headphones mentioned already, binauralization. Uh, this representation gives us already a, a great interaction with the content as uh, depending of course on the uh, functionalities provided by the uh, decoder or the, or, or the renderer we can uh, uh, interact with specific sound objects in our content and this this approach is is widely used in game audio engines nowadays so we went through the presentation layouts and some basic characteristics of channel-based audio and object-based audio. Uh, so I hope this, this has given you a good background for, for better understanding what actually Ambisonics is. So let's start with a short definition. So in Wikipedia, uh, we can find a definition stating that Ambisonics is a full sphere surround sound format that in addition to the horizontal plane, it covers sound sources above and below uh, listener. Uh, so I would like to make this definition more technical. Uh, so I would say that it is rather a 3D audio format that represents the surrounding sound field with a specific number of directive components that are basically audio channels that carry information about the physical properties of sound. So. What is sound field, you may ask? So basically, this, this, uh, this is a term used to describe uh, the physical changes uh, in air that are characterized by, by acoustic pressure and, and the velocity. Uh, and what we also should know about ambisonics, that is, uh, it is not a new technology at all. Ambisonics was developed already in in seventies by British engineer Michael Gerson, so uh, it it hasn't been using used 
from the from the very beginning because there was no need for uh, such uh, applications. It changed in nineties where uh, people wanted to experience uh, with uh, extended or virtual reality, and Ambisonics uh, quite well fits to that kind of applications. Okay, so before describing some more technical aspects of Ambisonics. Uh, let me first list some uh, benefits that it brings with it. So, from the production point of view, we could say that Ambisonics is completely layout independent. That means that uh, during uh, producing the Ambisonics content, we, we don't care what kind of presentation layout will be used at the user side. It is a job for the renderer. Uh, in fact, uh, Ambisonics can represent the whole surrounding sound field. So it, it does not focus only on the parts where the uh, speakers will be positioned. It can cover the whole surrounding sound field. This technology is also well developed and described in terms of uh, equations, mathematical equations and uh, tools that can be used for encoding and decoding uh, Ambisonics content. Uh, a, a great feature of Ambisonics is that it is a really efficient uh, way to represent a very complex scenes uh, with very large number of moving sound objects. So it is also a great way to, to capture real and really complex audio scenes. From the rendering point of view, again, a good advantage is a great advantage of, of, of uh, Ambisonics is that uh, it can be decoded and rendered to any presentation layout. And uh, another great feature is that uh, already in the Ambisonics domain uh, we have a great way to interact with the content with the built in three degrees of freedom control. And I will demonstrate it to you later on. As other special audio techniques, Ambisonics has also its drawbacks. So from the production point of view, uh, we need a really expensive equipment and complex software tools uh, to, in order to, to, to create uh, Ambisonics content. And uh, another uh, drawback is that if you would like to have higher spatial resolution of, of, uh, of the created or captured sound field, we need to have higher order ambisonics and higher order ambisonics means more audio channels. So we need more space to store our audio data. From the rendering point of view, uh, similarly to, to object based audio, before we play our ambisonics content, we need to uh, decode it or re render it to, to the specific uh, uh, presentation layout. So from one hand, it is a Advantage from the other hand, it is a disadvantage as we require, uh, as we need another uh, process before listening to this content. Uh, also, higher order ambisonics require more speakers to, uh, in order to reproduce our sound field properly. And this topic will also be discussed by me later. And uh, ambisonics uh, has a relatively small listening spot. That means that uh, the position, uh, the, the optimal position of listening is uh, relatively small when listening to Abisonics. We, we, are, not, we are not supposed to be uh, moving too much left or right from, the, from this spot because we won't be hearing the, the sound field properly and the positioning of the individual sound sources can be mismatched. So now let me go through some technical aspects of Ambisonics format. So as already mentioned, Ambisonics uh, provides a sound field representation with a set of uh, directive components, uh, which are basically audio channels and they are called uh, spherical harmonics. Uh, another common name for this representation is uh, B format. So each spherical harmonic or this directive com component contains uh, or carries specific information about certain physical properties of uh, the of the sound field. 
So for instance, zero of order ambisonics component, which is called W, stores only information about the sound pressure. So uh, it can be compared to uh, it can be compared to uh, to the omnidirectional microphone, uh, which uh, captures the sound with the same sensitivity, uh, no matter the the direction of arrival uh, is. First order ambisonics components uh, uh, they already store information about uh, acoustic velocity and their uh, directivity pattern can be compared to the figure of 8 microphone which has the highest sensitivity in front and at the back and it has no sensitivity at the, at the sides. And for, for these components this figure of 8 shape is, is uh, is positioning is positioned accordingly to to the uh, axis uh, y z and x higher order ambisonics components uh, contain information about higher order derivatives of uh, of the pressure field so as we could see on the previous slide uh, with uh, with increasing uh, order of the ambisonics the, the number of uh, spherical components also grows uh, so again, zero of order ambisonics consists only of one spherical harmonic, which is W. First order ambisonics consists of additional three spherical harmonics, X, Y, Z, and we have them here. And second order ambisonics adds another five spherical harmonics. So in general, we could uh, describe this dependency using very simple formulas, so we can determine how many uh, spherical harmonics in total will our ambisonics sound field contain. For instance, fourth order ambisonics consists of uh, 25 uh, spherical harmonics in total. So let's go back to the end of the best, uh, to, to, to one of the best uh, features of uh, ambisonics, which is uh, built in um, three degrees of freedom control or rotations, in other words. So, higher order ambisonics allow uh, for easy manipulation of the sound field, and uh, the, this manipulation uh, is described by rotations. We have three kinds of rotations here there is roll rotation, which means uh, rotating our head uh, left or uh, right, R rolling our head left or right, pitch rotation, which means leaning our head uh, to the front or to the back, and uh, your rotation, which means rotating our head left or right. So uh, this, this, uh, this feature is provided uh, with a simple manipulation of uh, our uh, spherical harmonic components. Here is an example of first order ambisonics that is uh, being uh, manipulated with some simple trigonometric functions uh, and rotations described by, by uh, uh, azimuth uh, angle. And this feature is uh, extremely useful in the 360 audio video content. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, my voice is recorded in ambisonics format, so now I can slowly manipulate the sound field and rotate uh, it so you can hear my voice more on the left side, going behind your, behind your head, and now more on your right side, and back in front of you. Of course, you, you need to wear your headphones properly to hear this uh, effect. So now let's talk about uh, some formats and conventions. Uh, so as I mentioned, spherical harmonics or HOA components can be can be uh, stored as a typical audio channels, so PCM data in multi-channel wave files. Uh, so when we are processing the ambisonics content, it is crucial to know uh, in what order those spherical harmonics are put into the file or into the audio stream. And we can name here uh, three, three standards, which is ACN, uh, FUMA, FUMA, and SID. And uh, similarly, we need to know how the uh, spherical harmonics were normalized during the production process. 
So that means uh, what, what uh, gain factors were applied to the specific spherical harmonic components. And we can name here N3D, SN3D and, uh, and max and normalization. And here is an example of uh, VST plugin that allows uh, decoding of ambisonics uh, format to, to different kind of uh, presentation layouts. And as you can see, uh, here we have an option of, of format and we have to select uh, what channel ordering convention was used and uh, what uh, channel normalization uh, is applied to our ambisonics content. We can meet some uh, file formats that, that are designed specifically to HOA and uh, it is worth to mention here Ambix that uses ACN and SN3D conventions and this format is is mostly supported by uh, YouTube uh, and there is also an AMB format that is using uh, FUMA uh, general order ordering scheme and uh, max and normalization with slightly modification of W channel. So now let's discuss how Ambisonics content can be produced and uh, one way of doing this is, is, is recording the sound field. However, basically the recording of native Ambisonics, uh, I mean B format is impossible, impossible except uh, zero of order. Uh, where zero of order can be compared to the single omnidirectional microphone, so it is possible to capture it. So we have uh, our first order ambisonic uh, microphones that uh, capture sound field in uh, the so-called uh, A format, and uh, this format requires further conversion to to B format. Usually, first order ambisonics microphone uh, microphones consist of uh, four cardioid or super cardioid uh, capsules. Uh, here is uh, an example of microphone with uh, directivity pattern, cardioid directivity pattern. Apart from first order ambisonics microphones, uh, we have also higher order microphones, uh, higher, higher order ambisonics microphones. So uh, basically those are spherical microphone arrays with multiple omnidirectional capsules and they also capture uh, sound field in uh, F A format uh, that needs a conversion to the uh, B format. Uh, so. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, higher order ambisonics microphone have some physical constraints that are related to the number of, of capsules that are being used in those microphones. And those constraints uh, re uh, relate to, to a special aliasing or narrow frequency band of uh, some of the spherical harmonics. But I will now uh, focus on, uh, on, on these aspects uh, during this presentation. Uh, so here we have uh, Eigen mic microphone with 32, direction, uh, 32 omnidirectional uh, capsules and it is capable of uh, capturing 4th of order ambisonics. Uh, here we have Zilia ZM1 microphone that uh, uh, has 19 uh, omnidirectional capsules and here we have a, a core sound octo mic that uh, I believe has um, eight capsules and uh, uh, it has a slightly different construction than the uh, mentioned before Eigenmic and Azalea ZM1. It is a second order ambisonics microphone. The other way of producing ambisonics content is encoding. So in general, in this process we are panning encoding our sound sources to the desired position uh, usually defined in spherical coordinate system using azimuth and uh, elevation angles. And uh, just for an example, I have listed here uh, a set of simple equations that allow to encode our sound source S and compute corresponding uh, spherical harmonics components, that is W, X, Y, Z. Uh, with, uh, with the position defined uh, with uh, azimuth and elevation angle, respectively. 
So this process can be repeated for, uh, repeated for any number of sound sources and then the resulting spherical harmonics are added up uh, and then they, they uh, bring us uh, our sound fit representation in the form of our spherical harmonics. So now let's discuss uh, discuss uh, the decoding or uh, also called rendering of uh, ambisonics. So basically, in in simple words, the the result of uh, decoding ambisonics into the regular speaker layout uh, with with a given number of speakers, uh, we can compare to recording a, a sound field uh, with a set of super cardioid or cardioid microphones where each of the microphone is uh, positioned in that way that it points towards the position of the of, of a speaker that belongs to, to the target speaker layout. So here we have an example of a super cardioid directivity pattern of a microphone. Um, what is needed uh, to know here that uh, the higher order of ambisonics we have the more speakers uh, are needed in order to, to properly uh, reproduce our uh, sound field. And this uh, can be easily estimated by using a simple equation uh, depicted here. So for instance, for fourth order ambisonics uh, sound field representation, we need, we need at least 25 speakers in our rendering speaker layout. Uh, in order to propor properly reproduce uh, the, the sound field. And uh, just for the reference, here is a set of simple equations that can be used for, for decoding of first order ambisonics to the speaker uh, setup, where the positions uh, of the speakers are determined by, uh, again, azimuth and elevation angle. Okay, on, on the previous slides I mentioned that uh, the higher order of ambisonics we have, the more spatial resolution can be provided. I also mentioned that uh, higher order ambisonics require a high enough number of speakers in order to reproduce the sound field properly. So here I wanted to simply demonstrate what, what is the reason of that. So let's assume that we have captured our sound field that uh, con consists of two of, of sound generated via, by, by two sound sources, S1 and S2. And we have captured it uh, in first, second, third and fourth order ambisonics. And now we would like to uh, render our sound field into the speaker array and one of the speakers is positioned at the angle of 180 degrees. So uh, if we are doing uh, first order uh, decoding, the directivity pattern uh, for that position will uh, have that shape marked with the blue line. So we can see that it captures uh, quite a significant uh, part of our surrounding space. And uh, the, the signal plate with this uh, speaker here will cover uh, mostly source number one and uh, a significant part also of, of the source number two. But when uh, we decode fourth order ambisonics, we can see that this directivity pattern is, is, is much narrow and it captures uh, actually only source number one. So the signal uh, that will be derived from fourth order ambisonics and then played with the speaker will contain only audio generated uh, by source number two. So when uh, decoding for, uh, for higher order ambisonics, uh, and we would like to, to have uh, also uh, properly uh, reproduced energy generated by source number two, we would need another speaker position and the angle of uh, 220 degrees. Uh, so from one hand, uh, having a higher order ambisonics give us higher spatial resolution so we can extract much more detailed information from our sound field. On the other hand, uh, we need to uh, remember that uh, proper reproduction of such 
uh, sound field representation requires also a higher number of speakers. And finally, as you could already hear, HOA representation of sound field can be binauralized and uh, reproduced with headphones. So I just wanted to list here some uh, two types of binarization techniques that can be used for, for that purpose. So first of it is a virtual speaker approach. So basically, as with decoding into the speaker layers, we decode uh, our ambisonics uh, sound field representation to, to the uh, some uh, speaker setup uh, and uh, the generated signals are then uh, convolved with a, a specific subset of HRTFs that corresponds to the position of, of those speakers. So that is one uh, popular approach and the other approach is, is direct binarization. So our spherical harmonics are uh, directly mapped by means of uh, specifically designed uh, filters into the spatial characteristics of the full HRTF dataset. And uh, just to mention, HRTF is a head-related transfer function function that, uh, uh, in 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 short, uh, uh, describes how the sound propagates from the sound source in a given position to the left and right ear of the listener. So let's now go over uh, the typical applications of ambisonics. Uh, so I would start here with the three degrees of freedom audio that is uh, also joined with the 360 video content. And that kind of content is, is uh, widely propagated on YouTube platform or there is another platform called uh, HOAST that contains such recordings, but uh, also in higher order ambisonics as YouTube provides only first order ambisonics. And the other type of content is the so-called scene-based audio or audio for VR and AR. So this is basically the, the audio that is captured from one perspective, from one point. Mm. And uh, it uh, provides this uh, feature of uh, three degrees of freedom control that uh, that kind of content is uh, is being supported by mpeg h3d audio standard and will be also supported by mpeg -I immersive audio standard and the other type of content is uh, six degrees of freedom audio where uh, next to our three degrees of freedom which were pitch yaw and roll rotation we have additional three dimensions, three degrees of freedom, that is moving forward and backward, left, right, and up, down. So the, the user here will have a, a full freedom in navigating the, the sound scene. And uh, ambisonics is used here in, uh, in such applications where uh, there are multiple sound fields, uh, adjacent uh, sound fields captured or generated and using uh, special renderers, interpolation techniques, uh, uh, the renderer tries to uh, interpolate the sound fields uh, and, and allow the user move in between the, uh, in the, in between the objects uh, of the captured sound scene. Okay, so uh, now I would like to shortly uh, mention uh, how ambisonics could be used in game audio so uh, one of the greatest feature of ambisonics is that it is a very efficient way of storing a really complex sound scenes with multiple sound objects so imagine that we we have a very complex sound scene that consists of hundreds of sound sources so instead of processing of of uh, hundreds of uh, audio tracks uh, we can uh, transfer them into the spherical harmonic domain uh, for instance, to the fourth order, and then uh, we have only 20, 25 audio channels that can be further processed in the ambisonics domain. So we have a constant number of audio channels that, that does not depend on the number of sound objects that are present in the, in the sound field. So that is, that is one approach. And uh, the other approach is, is actually a similar one. However, we can use here uh, 
uh, mixing of uh, uh, real life captured environment uh, sounds that uh, that was captured in uh, ambisonics domain with some uh, additional artificial objects also uh, transformed into the uh, HOA domain. So th those are basic, basically two, two ideas how the ambisonics could be uh, used in games. And uh, of course it is worth, worth to mention its, its uh, capability of, of uh, very nice and smooth control of, the, uh, uh, of, the, of this three degrees of freedom. Okay, so let's go to the demo section. The first demo actually was already presented to you. That was the comparison of mono stereo and binaural audio generated from Ambisonics audio. Here you can uh, scan the image and, and go again to this video and watch it, watch it again. Uh, another video I would like to present it to you, present to you is um, Free Degrees of Freedom Audio with 360 video content. Uh, I won't be playing it uh, to you now, however, you are welcome to, to scan and uh, go to check it by yourself. And the last one is uh, Six Degrees of Freedom content uh, with a fully navigable audio. So basically this is a project that I participated in uh, some time ago, where we recorded Poznan Philharmonic Orchestra. And uh, it is an example of Six Degrees of Freedom audio generated from uh, multiple adjacent uh, sound fields captured with ambisonics microphones. So thanks to this representation and uh, special rendering techniques, uh, you are able to, to walk through the stage and listen to the sound from uh, different perspectives. So please put on your headphones uh, now and uh, enjoy the, the show. my presentation uh, I hope you, you like the demos and, and and the content here are some references and sources of the content where you can find more detailed information about ambisonics I will be more than happy to discuss you uh, with you uh, and, and answer some of your questions during the Q&A session and also feel free to, to reach out to me on LinkedIn profile thank you